My name is Hans. Welcome to Growing Sense of Me and Marijuana. You know, marijuana has grown wild all by itself for thousands of years. With a little bit of assistance, you will be doing nothing more than what Mother Nature has been doing all these years. So kick back, relax, grab a smoke, and enjoy our feature presentation. Let's begin with the seed. The characteristics of marijuana are carried in the seed. Here we have one of the best quality seeds in the world, Northern Lights. And I can tell you, these Northern Lights are guaranteed to create a happy face. Here we have a small white tray and six smaller two inch peat moss cups. The peat cups are filled with our standard soil mixture, which we will cover later. I will water them thoroughly. A hole is made in the center of the soil using a chopstick or similar tool. One seed to each hole and lightly cover with soil. I'm going to cover these seeds with inverted peat moss cups. This will help give the seeds the darkness they like when germinating. The seeds are placed under fluorescent 40 watt grow lights. This will help keep them warm. The covers also prevent moisture loss. And there we are. Some people like to germinate seeds in a moist paper towel or moist clean rag. These seeds are folded into the washcloth and placed in a small baggie. The seeds are then placed in a dark, warm spot, such as my cupboard here. A few days later, seeds usually germinate between two and 10 days. These seeds have been in the cupboard for only three days. Let's take a look at them. If they are not ready, we will check the moisture content of the washcloth and put them back. If they have germinated, we will place them into a soil medium. Well, it looks as though all our seeds have germinated. Taking a closer look, we discover the taproot has elongated and will grow downward. The embryonic leaves are still encased in the seed pods. These seeds are ready to go into a soil medium. This is the standard soil medium we germinated our seeds directly into. We will plant the sprouted seeds in the same mixture. Water, and this time, make a hole in the soil about one inch deep. Gently place the sprout into the hole, root tip pointing down. The seed pod is left out of the soil as it contains the embryonic leaves and should not be buried. Gently firm the soil around the sprout. This sprout has shed its seed pod shell. It will grow rapidly from this point on, as we shall see. Once a seed is sprouted, it is left under the fluorescent lights for a couple of days, then placed under the 400 watt metal halide as it continues to grow. Fluorescence and metal halides in the cloning room run 18 hours a day. Once a plant has reached its 12 inches or so, it is time to determine its sex or gender. One, two, three, four, five nodes or growth terminals. We will cut here to make a clone. Below the parent seedling will continue to grow. Potting soil with 25% worm casting, coarse grade horticultural perlite, and horticultural hydrated lime, the foundation of our standard soil mixture. I am going to pour about three gallons of perlite into any container. On top of that, I am pouring an equal three gallons of potting soil, this time with 25% worm castings. Approximately two cups of hydrated lime is added to the mixture. Wear a proper mask and only mix your soil in a ventilated area. Do not breathe the dust.
If you can't find 25% worm castings, potting soil, you may supplement a standard potting soil with another organic such as this seabird guano. About one tablespoon per gallon of soil would do. You will need a plastic marker for the parent seedling to indicate its number and one for the clone which it came from. You will need some small plastic peat cups and some rooting solution. Here we have dip and grow and here we have Hormex and of course a razor blade. Dip and grow is for rooting. Hormex is a soil additive. Once a clone is taken the bottom lateral branches, which are at each node, will begin to elongate. Our first clone will be taken here. A cap full of Hormex is added to a gallon of water. Like Super Thrive, it is a hormone and vitamin additive. The soil oxygenator OxyPlus is optional. We have filled our peat moss cups with the standard soil mixture. You may also use 100% small grade horticultural vermiculite for clones if you wish. Whichever you use, place the peat cups in a shallow tray and water thoroughly. Once you have saturated each cup, make sure to fill your tray with one inch of standing water. There's our one inch of standard water being added now. Using this chopstick, I will make a hole in the soil all the way to the bottom. This helps plant the clone. Fill the dip and grow bottle with dip and grow to the line indicated. Then add water. Fill to the next line indicated and shake the mix. Here we are. Using a razor blade, the top three or four inches of the parent seedling is cut off just below the next lower node as seen here. The clone is then placed in the rooting solution about 10 seconds. The clone is then put in the soil with the stem placed all the way to the bottom of the soil. The clone is marked number one and dated. The parent seedling is placed back under the 400 watt metal halide. It is marked number one also. The next parent seedling is cloned and placed in the dip and grow. It only needs to be dipped about 10 seconds. Then it is placed into the soil medium. Its parent will be back under the metal halide to continue its 18 hour a day light schedule. This clone will be marked number two. Notice this next clone. It needs to be trimmed a bit to obtain the two inch long stem we require for placing it in the soil. Into the dip and grow, then into the soil. Press the soil firmly around the plant. One more clone and our tray is filled. Now, it wasn't that easy. And there we are. Be sure to change the one inch of standing water every day with fresh oxygenated water. Then place the clones under 12 hours a day, 40 watt fluorescent grow lights. Keep warm and check daily. If they wilt a little bit, don't worry, they'll come back. After about two weeks, some of your clones will start forming these double sets of white pistols. These clones are female. The parent seedlings they came from are female also. Keep them. If your clones begin to form clusters of these small ovid ball-shaped pods, they are males. Throw them away and the parent seedling they came from. Yuck. The parent seedlings have grown during the two weeks the clones were determining gender. This plant has developed two heads from where the tip of the plant was cloned. Two clones may now be taken from these tops. Lower lateral growth has increased also. These lovely parent seedlings are all female. There are two ways you may continue your crop from here. You may clone the females and keep the clones and place the females immediately into bloom. This is called the no mamas method. Or you may select a few of your best mamas and clone them every two or three weeks. We will show you both methods. 
This female will give four nice clones now. After it has been cloned, about two weeks later, it will double in size and clone production. Let's first see how the no mamas method works. Using the standard cloning procedure, you will clone one half of your female parent seedlings. About two or three weeks later, clone the second half of your parent seedlings. About two or three weeks later, the first one half you cloned will be about a month old or so, would have developed roots and grown to the size of about 12 inches. They are now ready to clone and then be placed into bloom. About two or three weeks later, the same thing is done with the second one half of clones you took. Using this method, you will clone and place the clone plants into bloom about every two or three weeks. Clones are basically their own mamas. If your plants take about eight weeks to totally bloom, you will need enough plants to fill up one quarter of the blooming room each two weeks. You will then harvest once every two weeks. It is a good idea to make a few more clones than you really need each two weeks. That way, if you lose a few, you will still have your quota each two weeks to fill your blooming area one quarter full. That way, you will harvest one quarter of your blooming area once every two weeks or so. If you want, you can make a clone, raise it four weeks till it is about 12 inches tall, clone it, and place the plant into bloom. Fill one half of your blooming area once every 30 days and harvest once every 30 days. The choice of timing for cloning and harvest is up to you. The procedure is always the same. Clone, dip, plant. The one inch of standing water for the clones is needed only for the first week. Once the clones have developed a strong hydraulic flow up the stem, they only need to be kept moist, no standing water. After the clones develop roots, they are transplanted into five and a half inch plastic squares and placed under metal halides. Once the plant has been cloned, it is placed in the blooming room for blooming plants, we will add some bone meal to our standard soil mixture. The bone meal is simply sprinkled into the soil and mixed. For this six gallons of standard soil mixture, I have added about a cup or so of bone meal. And there's our bone meal going into the standard potting soil mixture. You can use other supplements. When parent plants are placed into the blooming room, they should be put into larger containers. They will continue to grow their roots and the root will need more space. I will put this plant into a water jug that holds about one and a half gallons of soil. These white healthy roots will grow quickly in their new environment. A little soil is placed at the bottom of the container. Do not bury your stem. Then, water your plant after transplanting. This plant came from container number five. I will mark the new container number five. This helps me to keep track of special plants. This plant was pinched when it was very young. It will yield two nice buds. I also like to give my plants at least a couple of mistings each day with plain water once they have gone into the blooming area. I like to use seltzer water sometimes because it supplies additional CO2 directly to the plant's surfaces. Regular water is fine. I spray the older budded plants as well as those that were just placed in the blooming area. You should spray in the morning and afternoon. Don't spray just before lights out time. This may cause fungus or molds to grow from unevaporated water. We have seen the no mama's method. Now let's look at the more common method, the mama's method. Here in the corner under our 400 watt metal halide, we're growing two mother plants and a bunch of their pre-flowering babies. This method takes up a bit more space, but is suited to the beginning grower. This young female seedling has been growing for about 45 days and has been pinched several times. You can see that she has many nice growing tips, which can be made into clones. This plant will give over a dozen nice clones every two or three weeks. 
These two mamas produce an endless supply of clones which are grown for about four weeks and then placed into the blooming area. They're grown to the height of about a foot. After eight weeks in the blooming area, they're harvested. The cloning procedure is always the same. Cut, dip, and place in a soil medium with one inch of standing water. After the mamas are cloned, they are placed back under the 400 watt metal halide. They have received a standard full spectrum vegetative high nitrogen fertilizing once every two weeks, plus a daily watering. The metal halide also provides light to these 20 preflowers. It keeps about a foot above the tops of the plants. To the left, we have clones and smaller preflowers. The clones are kept under the fluorescent grow lights for about two weeks or until they develop roots. They are then transplanted into these five and a half inch plastic squares, like these, left under the fluorescent lights a few more days and then moved over here under the metal halide. After about two or three weeks of metal halide, they're about 12 to 18 inches tall and ready to go into the blooming area. Before the clones go under the metal halide, they get a half dose of high nitrogen vegetative full spectrum fertilizer and watered daily. Once my preflowers are about eight inches tall, I trim the lower weaker growth, leaving only the upper growth, which is closer to the light. This lower growth would not produce much. It would only waste energy, which could be used elsewhere on the plant. I will not cut the fan leaves as they will continue to benefit the plant. Leave them on. Let's look at some clones. This clone is about three weeks old. Notice the nice white root system. Besides developing great roots, it has grown a few inches taller since it was first cloned. This clone is definitely ready to be transplanted into a five and a half inch plastic square and then placed under the metal halide. This clone is not quite as big as the other one. It is only two weeks old. It has developed some roots and may also be transplanted into a larger container. Clones like a temperature of about 80 degrees. I use a heating pad for the first week after cloning. It keeps the standing water about 80 degrees. After the first week, the clones usually don't require the standing water or the heating pad. This propane heater is turned on for about five minutes every couple of hours. It only takes about that long to fill this eight by 12 foot grow area with about 1,500 parts per million CO2 for a couple of hours. This fan on the floor blows the heavier than air CO2 upward. It is then blown from the five by eight cloning area into the seven by eight blooming area with my ceiling fan. This partition divides the two areas and has a sliding door for easy entry. CO2 enters the blooming area here and is constantly circulated by the array of fans. Electric or propane heat is best for heating in the winter. This oscillating floor fan blows cool air upward and around. This oscillating ceiling fan mixes upper air. The air is finely vented out a hidden roof fan at the rate of one total room exchange per approximately two hours. After about two or three weeks, when the clones have grown some nice roots like these, I transplant them into a high nitrogen fortified potting soil in five and a half inch plastic containers. After the clones are transplanted, I refer to them as preflowers. They are no longer clones, they are young plants preparing to go into flower. They are planted only up to the base of the stem. Don't plant the stem. The CO2 enriched atmosphere of the cloning area creates a much faster growth rate for all the different stages of growth in the cloning area. Clones, preflowers, and mamas all benefit. The transplant receives about one quarter cup of water, and there's your young preflower. This young clone has some nice roots also and is ready to be transplanted. The preflowers will be placed under the metal halide for about two or three weeks with 18 hours light daily. 
they will grow rapidly. Here in the cloning area, we have two squat bushy mamas. They use about one third of the light from the 400 watt metal halide. The other two thirds of the light is utilized by these beautiful 12 to 18 inch preflowers, all exact genetic replicas of the two mamas. Mamas, preflowers, and clones all share the cloning area, utilizing the same 18 hour a day light period. These floor fans and the roof fans are also on an 18 hour a day schedule, the same as the lights. Constant airflow through and out the grow area is a must. Plants require a constant supply of fresh air. You must separate the cloning area from the blooming area because of the different light schedules of each. Our divider wall is two layers of eight mil black plastic and a sliding door. Air movement is important for another reason. As the moving air blows against the plants, the plants sway to and fro. This movement stimulates cellulose growth within the stem, which strengthens the stem and the overall plant. Using heaters in the winter and air conditioners in the summer, I attempt to maintain a constant temperature of 76 to 78 degrees in the grow areas year round. It is most important in this, the blooming area, to have a nice 1500 parts per million once every two hours dosing of CO2. It is also important to have a goodly amount of fans in the blooming area. This fan cools a ballast and also pushes CO2 and cool air upward and around. This oscillating floor fan does a good job also. An oscillating ceiling fan blowing hot air downward is a must. This six foot long moving light fixture helps the 1000 watt high pressure sodium light traverse the eight foot width of the blooming area. These organic liquids and powders all have very low concentrations of primary nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. They are, however, abundant in secondary nutrients and trace elements. Powders may be mixed into the soil surface. Some sprays are for foliar feeding only. A variety of guanos, kelps, and organic fertilizers will assure you of a clean, healthy smoking product. Follow label instructions. Over-fertilizing is a common problem. Don't do it. When transplanting your pre-flowers using the mama's method, remember, add a transplanting aid such as B1 to your water. These 18-inch pre-flowers are ready to be transplanted and placed into the blooming area. These plants will grow another six to eight inches tall and will grow similar radial growth and become slightly more bushy during their first two weeks in the blooming area. They will also have a tremendous amount of root growth. Therefore, they need larger pots for the blooming area. I will fertilize them with a standard blooming fertilizing for their first day in the blooming area. If the label instructions call for, say, a tablespoon of liquid fertilizer in a gallon of water and use every two weeks, try this. Use one quarter tablespoon every three or four days in a gallon of water. This will give your plants a more consistent supply of nutrients, and if you make a mistake and over fertilize, it will be a smaller mistake. Smaller amounts of fertilizer over shorter periods of time. We give this a little water. The transplant is watered with a transplanting aid such as Hormex, Super Thrive, or B1. It is then saturated with regular water and is then ready for blooming. Sometimes my blooming area gets really crowded and I am forced to leave my plants in the five and a half inch squares. This young female has been blooming for three weeks in this small container. In the smaller container, the water and nutrients are used up much faster. I could totally bloom this plant till it was finished in about five more weeks in this container. However, I won't. Since I have harvested and now have room for it to be placed in a larger container, like this two gallon bucket here, it will make a really nice plant. 
This blooming room has plants that have been in here for about two weeks, some for about four weeks, some for about six weeks, and I just harvested those that have been in here for about eight weeks. Regardless of whether you use the no mamas method or the mamas method, the process is basically the same. You clone once every two or three weeks. After your clones develop roots, pre-flowers are made once every two or three weeks. Then, once every two or three weeks, pre-flowers are placed into one quarter of the blooming area. Then, once every two or three weeks, you harvest about one quarter of your blooming area. These plants get about two cups of water twice each day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Never overwater your plants. Let the soil breathe and dry out a bit between waterings. This beautiful northern lights is almost ready to be harvested. Using my 16 powered hand lens, I can see that. The stalked bulbous trichromes on the top of the bud and around its sides have changed from a clear translucence to a foggy opaque. Once this happens, you will notice that within a few days, some of the bulbous tips will actually start to turn brown or golden. This is a sign to me that the plant is ready to harvest. This nice 22 inch gonna be mega bud is not ready to harvest yet. Notice the nice white pistols. She's gonna be nice. When a plant is ready to harvest, about 50% of the pistils will turn either brownish red or a golden color. It is quite common to have as many as two-thirds or more of the pistils turn color by harvest time. This beautiful female has so many stalk trichromes, she looks like she's been rolled in sugar. About two weeks before harvest, I like to give my blooming plants a final fertilizing. This time, I am using seabird guano. The powdered bird guano is simply sprinkled on the surface of the soil. I'm putting about a quarter to a half teaspoon and placing it all around the plant. Any organic fertilizer would be fine to use for the last fertilizing. I am using this stick to blend and mix the bird guano into the top of the soil. I will then water the bird guano into the soil with a liberal amount of water. There, that's mixed in nicely. No more fertilizer is given to a plant two weeks prior to its harvest. This nice bud will yield about one half of an ounce when properly dried. It has about five really nice tight buds and lots of smaller ones. This single stalk bud is about a foot tall and about three inches wide. It smells really fragrant. This bud is really solid and heavy. It will yield about a quarter ounce. As you can see, it was bloomed in a five and a half inch plastic square. Not bad for such a small container. Would you like to have a closer look at that? Mmm, can you smell that? How about a closer look? Can you smell it now? This plant was also grown in a five and a half inch square. It's a beauty and a little over a foot long. It will yield over a quarter ounce. You may let your pre-flowers grow anywhere from eight inches to 18 inches before putting them into the blooming area. This plant was placed into bloom when it was about eight inches tall. It has done quite well. Did you want to see a closer up? Look at those nice stalk trichromes. If you keep your plants to about a foot in height, you can grow four of these plants in a one foot square area. An eight foot by four foot blooming area such as this will hold about 128 of these. If you harvest one quarter every two weeks, you will harvest 32 each and every two weeks. Whoo, can you smell that? That's okay. This little baby is guaranteed to do the trick. The yield for this one is about six grams. 
This plant was put into the blooming area when it was about eight inches tall. It's done nicely. Bigger plants will yield bigger buds. I'm going to leave some growth on the two bottom stems of this plant. This plant is so nice, I'm going to put it back under 18 hours a day light, let it vegetate and grow for about a month, then bloom it again. See what I have left? Nice, huh? And can you blame me? This one plant gave about two ounces when it was dry. You can do this. Once a plant is harvested, I trim off all the excess larger and smaller leaves. I save them to make butter, oil, or marijuana alcohol. Then I use that for cooking. Trimming is easiest done directly after harvest. The plant is still rigid and therefore easier to work with. See how easy that does? I like to trim my buds right down to the nubs, leaving only the very best of the bud for smoking. Look out, don't let it get you. Don't touch it, you'll just get all that sticky stuff on your hands. You should hang your plants upside down in a warm, dark place to dry, such as this closet here. The first plant on the left was just placed in here a few minutes ago. These buds on the right have been in here over a week. They are ready to be smoked or eaten. I keep my hemp shirt in here just so it will smell nice. Follow the simple instructions in this video and soon this will be you. If you wish, you could purchase our companion book, The Sea of Green, Perpetual Harvest. If you like growing marijuana, you should check out our latest Cooking with Marijuana videos, featuring many fine dishes such as a scrumptious sensimean salmon. Or perhaps you would like to see step-by-step -step how to make this tasty veal marsalis. Each video will show you how to take some of those nice buds you just grew to make marijuana flour, butter, oil, and alcohol. We will then show you how to properly use them in the preparation of fine gourmet dishes, vegetarian dishes, and appetizing sweets and treats. Doesn't that look nice? There's our salsa. Chef Hans and I have created these videos to allow everyone the opportunity to explore the wonderful world of marijuana cuisine. I think you will agree these videos, just like these cool desserts, will certainly rate three thumbs up. Grow, grow, grow your buds with the Sea of Green. Where? Oh, hi. My name is Hans. Welcome my grow room. If I could, I'd like to speak with you for just a moment about marijuana. Marijuana is all natural, organic, and chemical free. It has 
been used and accepted by peoples all over the world for over 5,000 years. Only recently, marijuana has been criminalized and become victim to a misinformation campaign by the U.S. government. The war on drugs is a failure. The United States is spending billions of dollars and is destroying thousands of families by incarcerating non-violent marijuana offenders. That could be you or me. These laws are misinformed, illogical, and counterproductive. Non supports normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. We donate 1% of the sales from this video to support Normal's efforts to end the war on drugs and legalize marijuana. Hans says, think for yourself. Change is in your hands.